Check, check. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Jared Poirier, and welcome to my movie review show, where I talk about movies. Okay, so on last week's show, we did a review of the new Tomb Raider, and I also did my first ever live stream. But on today's show, we're doing a review of Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace. And in this review, I'm wearing sunglasses, because this is a controversial review. Because I have opinions on Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace, that are really controversial. That's right, guys. I actually like Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. And I'm gonna tell you why right now. So the first thing that's good in Episode One: The Phantom Menace is the action. Not only is the action in this movie really well executed, but there's a good variety of action. There's some space battles, there's some lightsaber fights, there's a massive war going on, but there's also some smaller fight sequences as well. The other thing that I like in this movie is the pacing. A lot of people complain about the quick pacing of Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace because it just goes from scenario to scenario and you never really get that much time to breathe between scenes. But I think that this style of pacing was actually a good decision and I'll go into that more a little bit later. Okay, so let's talk about some specific scenes that I really like in Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. I really enjoy the pod race sequence. The pod race sequence is awesome. It's really well done, it's really exciting, and to this day, I really enjoy the idea of these like super fast racing machines that are basically made out of garbage. Another great scene in this movie is the final lightsaber fight. You've got an epic three-man lightsaber battle. You've got Obi-Wan doing crazy flips all over the place. They're going through all these different environments. Man, that scene's awesome. And you've also got the death of Qui-Gon on this scene, spoilers, and the death of Darth Maul. And I like how this fight scene doesn't just come out of nowhere. It's actually built up earlier in the movie. When Qui-Gon Jinn faces down Darth Maul earlier in the film, it's just a taste of what's to come. And I actually think that this final lightsaber fight in Star Wars Episode One, The Phantom Menace, holds up as one of the greatest lightsaber fights of all time. Another really great thing about Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace is the fact that there was a great game to accompany this film. Yeah guys, I'm talking about Jedi Power Battles. Jedi Power Battles was so awesome. You could play with like three of your friends and you could all be a different Jedi. But I'm rambling a bit here, so let's get back to the movie. Because I have a theory on The Phantom Menace that I think explains why this film is good despite the criticism. And I think that when you watch this movie, you need to keep in mind the target audience. This film was not made for 20 year olds. It wasn't really even made for teenagers. This film was made for kids. So even though Jake Lloyd might not have been the best choice for Anakin, I think that it was actually a really good decision here by George Lucas to center the story around a kid. And I think the fact that this film was aimed towards kids goes a long way in explaining the incredibly quick pacing of this film because kids have really, really low attention spans. And if you aren't throwing all types of action and crazy stuff out there, they're gonna get bored and they're not gonna like the movie. I think that this also kind of explains Jar Jar but I'm not gonna start making excuses for Jar Jar. So yeah guys, when you take the perspective of this movie basically being like a fantasy fulfillment for a young kid, uh, I think that that puts the whole film in like a new light and you can really appreciate it for what it is. Okay, so before I finish up with this video here guys, I just wanna go into some of the stuff that I admit is really bad about Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. The acting is bad pretty much all around. Natalie Portman's bad, Ewan McGregor's bad, uh, anyone else in this movie is pretty bad. And I can also admit that it is really weird that Natalie Portman's character is in love with Anakin Skywalker, because this whole relationship, guys, ah, it's just strange. He's like a really young boy, and she's way too old for him. Yeah, I can admit that this is a really weird element of the movie. And the other thing that I've heard this movie being criticized for is kind of having some racist undertones. And I honestly never really took that perspective on this film before, but once I heard that criticism, I did understand it. When you look at Jar Jar, yeah, he is kind of a black stereotype, I guess. And those aliens that fight Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan, yeah, I guess they're kind of like Asian stereotypes. So I can accept that this movie deserves some heat for that. But I don't think that George Lucas was really trying to be racist here. I think he's just a little bit out of touch. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for my video on Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I hope that you guys will argue with me down in the comments. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys. And I will see you guys next time. Hey, homies, I'm doing the good YouTuber shout out. And today, we're shouting out Real Talk. So my buddy John runs this really awesome YouTube channel called Real Talk. And over on John's channel, you're gonna find a lot of great movie reviews. And I think that he also started reviewing chips. Oh, I'm being told that that was just an April Fool's joke. So yeah, guys, if you aren't subscribed to the Real Talk yet, it's a really great channel, and you should check it out.